Backs fan Alice Cooper is with us. We've got the A-list guys out here tonight. Wow, Welcome. I'll tell you, I'll tell, you know, nothing better than opening night. And I tell you what, it's great here. Now, I know you're a big baseball fan. Do you get to a lot of Diamondback games? Well, you know, I'm on tour normally in the summertime. Uh -huh. And so uh, I'm usually, whatever city I'm in, if we have a night off, we go to the ball game. That's awesome. So uh, I get to throw a lot of first pitches out. <laughs> That's <laughs> and great. I, and I tell them right up front, look, this is coming in 30 miles an hour, so be careful. It's a right? change-up, basically. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's your go-to pitch, sure. Uh, what do you think about tonight, down 7-3 here? Hey, the story tonight is story, right? Yeah, you said it, I two mean, home runs. Two home runs, first game? Is this yeah, easy? first big league game. Has anybody ever done that? We're working on that. Yeah. Yeah. He's had three big league at-bats. He's got two homers. That's amazing. It's not that that's easy. pretty amazing. Well, here's another guy that's making his major league debut out there in the pitcher's mound right now. It's the ASU Sun Devil. Uh, Jake Barrett, who had a terrific spring with some power stuff on a Desert Ridge High School in Mesa. Here he is, his major league debut, his numbers of the minor leagues last year. Former Diamondback Gerardo Parra leads off the Colorado fifth. So are you getting ready to head out on tour soon here? We'll go back out in uh, May, and we're out all summer. We're out till November. Wow, that's a long uh, trip. Well, we've got, uh, I've got one tour. I've got my, my band's tour, and then I've got the Hollywood Vampires. With, you know, Johnny Depp and Joe Perry and those guys. Mm -hmm. And that's another tour. So I'm on two tours. <laughs> Because one's not enough, right? One's not enough. <laughs> you see the heat from Jake Barrett, 97 and 95. Ooh. He's ahead of Paro, and two. He's looked like this all spring. That looks good. I like that. Yeah, he has been. The word on Barrett all spring long has been dominant. That's what Chip Hale says. Everything coming out of his hand right now is dominant. Wants this one up. Para lifts it in the air along the left field line. They've got this thing surrounded out there, and it will be Ahmed in foul ground. You look at the guy in the middle, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, with, with all the touring, what does that do to your golf game? I assume you play a lot when you're we out. Every day. Every day. Every day. Callaway sets us up for golf every day. And, uh, my guitar player plays, my bass player plays, nice. and so we play every single day. I'd like to hang out with you guys. All you do is play music, go to ball games, and play golf. Who That's doesn't a good want gig. my job? That's a great gig, man. Who doesn't want my job? <laughs> Mark Reynolds, the former D-back, singled in the second. He's one for two. Now, I haven't been lucky enough to go to one of your shows because I'm working all summer while you're touring but do you still do the thing with the oh, the yeah. whole routine full theatrics full out theatrics nice and uh, it's so funny because kids are way into classic rock most of our audience is 15 to 25 no kidding Ooh, that almost came to you yeah we'll get one up here so be ready <laughs> BB I'm usually ready. dives in front <laughs> you know when I was a kid my, my, my dad would take me to see the Tigers play of course you know First game I remember was Jim Bunning against Herb Score. Ooh, Tiger Stadium. Tiger Stadium, Briggs Stadium at the time. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Al Kalen was my hero. I mean, he was my, you know, he was my Mickey Mantle. And the site for that ballpark is still there. People it's, go and they, they cut the grass, they take care of it, just people on their own. It's really, it's actually like a, it's like a historical monument that they will not turn down, you know. Yeah. But the seats smell like cigar and beer. <laughs> <laughs> Where they're supposed to smell, right? Yeah. That's Detroit, yeah. One and two. Who was your guy growing up? Al Kaline. He was That's my good choice. Hero. Number six. Chris Owings getting a test out there in the right center, drifting near the pool, and CO's got it. Two outs. Yeah, my my uh, my bedroom was a uh, shrine to Al Kaline. You know, and and here's a funny thing. You know, you meet Sinatra, you meet the Beatles, you meet Elvis, and everything. I'm getting ready to hit the ball at Oakland Hills, and somebody says, "Hey, Al Kaline's behind us." And I went. Pfft. <laughs> wow! Yeah. yeah, you know, and I went, I went back and I said, "Mr. Kaline," I said, oh. you know, I said, I, he "Always been my hero, nicest guy in the world." So you must have been a Dick McAuliffe fan oh, as well. Yeah. I mean, no, no, I could tell you every, the batting at Charlie Maxwell, uh, Harvey Keen, all the guys. Towards the end of my career, when my batting average was consistently right around the 200 mark, I kind of uh, adopted oh, no. some of Dick McAuliffe's mannerisms at the plate. Yeah, that, that's that, the, hand, the way out there. High hands, a high elbow. Yeah. Didn't he always look like he was going to hit it to right field with that? <laughs> yeah. it didn't work for me, but I don't know. Now, Alice, you'll be happy to know my partner here. Oftentimes on the road, uh, travels with his guitar. Ah. Yeah. 
when I got done playing and got into the broadcasting thing, I found I had a lot of free time and I didn't want to get in any trouble. So I, I'd always wanted to play. So I bought a cheap electric guitar and an amp with some headphones. And uh, I'm sure your your partner in your room loved that. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> he plays uh, once a year with Dan Bickley's band, uh, Whiskey's Quicker, out front of the ballpark. We have a. a it's kind of an annual thing that uh, BB gets out there and he plays a few songs. You know how it is? Three chords? Hey, you know, if Go you can play it. three chords, you can play any Ramon song. <laughs> nice. <you know? laughs> Those guys were great baseball fans. They were all, yeah, they were Yankee fans all the way. So, I mean. There's Dan Bickley, lead singer of Whiskey's Quicker. He's probably listening to Alice Cooper right now. <laughs> hey, all, most guys from Nashville were in rock bands. On my last album, we had, I had two songs where Vince Gill played guitar, Ooh. lead guitar, and that guy could play. I mean, he played rock and roll as good as anybody mm -hmm. I've ever heard. Why do you think kids are so into the classic rock and roll now? I just think that it's it's those songs, you you know, when they're listening to the Doors and Doors and the Rolling Stones, and they're just discovering Jimi Hendrix, you know. And a 16-year-old kid that's got a guitar and listening to Jimi Hendrix is going, what is that? <laughs> You know, can you imagine just this, that's like just discovering Monty Python, you know. Well, who was the first guy you heard that did that for you? That was uh, probably Keith Richards okay. was the first guy that, you know, that really made me go, what? And Jeff Beck mm -hmm. from from the Yardbirds. I mean, that guy is still probably the be best guitar player in the world. Mm -hmm. Jeff Beck is. Three and one now on DJ LeMahieu. I found it very interesting throughout my career that rock and roll guys always wanted to be ball players and ball players always wanted to be up on stage playing guitars. You have no idea <laughs> like, when we backstage at, if we're in a city and they have a night off it's full of baseball players. Well we had a band here last year with Trumbo and Aaron Hill and everybody was in that band. Yeah golf golf has that too. Off of Barrett it caroms to Segura still time to recover and they get LeMayhew the great Alice Cooper. Have a great tour this summer. Thanks for stopping guys, by. Thanks a lot, and I'll be watching you guys on TV. Hit them straight. And I'll, of course, I'll buy all your albums. <laughs>